NCA on Nationwide. I'm Naja Atutijani. Remember that this broadcast is being streamed live on YouTube and on our website nta.ng slash live remember to also follow us on social media now let's begin with news of confirmation president muhammad buhari has written to senate seeking the confirmation of justice uluka yodi ariwala as chief justice of nigeria the executive communication in line with the provision of section 231 of the 1999 constitution as amended implores the legislators to give the request due and timely consideration justice ulukayodi is acting is on acting capacity following the retirement of justice tanko muhammad in june 2022 today Ariola, as chief justice of nigeria pursuant to section 231 subsection 1 of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, I forward for confirmation by the Senate the appointment of Honorable Justice Oluka Ode Ariula as Chief Justice of Nigeria. While I hope that the submission will be considered in the usual expeditious manner, please accept the single Senate President the assurances of my highest consideration. The president also forwarded 14 names for appointment as resident electoral commissioners in INEC, five for renewal, while 14 are for fresh appointment of a five-year term, three persons for appointment as non-executive directors of the board of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mike Obadan South South, Justicia Nabuko South East, and Adiola Adetunji South West, while Suleiman Afipu is for confirmation as commissioner to represent South East in the national National Hajj Commission of Nigeria. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has passed for second reading a bill seeking to amend Section 11 of the Central Bank of Nigeria Act. Section 11 of the CBN Act 2007 provides conditions for disqualification and cessation of appointment of the governor deputy governor or director of the bank. The sponsor of the bill, Representative Sadas Wali, stressed the need to strengthen the act to restore credibility of the CBN as a lender of last resort. The new clause inserts, inserted rather provides that the governor, deputy governor or director of the CBN shall be disqualified or cease to hold that office if he is a member of a political party or involved in partisan politics. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Northern Caucus in the House, Musa Sarki Adar, has described as the handiwork of mischief makers, reports in some sections of the media alleging that lawmakers from the North plan to impeach the Speaker, Femi Paja Biamila, pertaining to the Water Resources Bill, which is being considered by the House. On the security front, the Nigerian army has confirmed that suspected terrorists attacked troops of the Guards Brigade around Bwari area of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. The Assistant Director of Army Public Relations Guard Brigade, Captain Godfrey Abapa, who confirmed the incident, stressed that the terrorists were successfully repelled while three soldiers were wounded during the crossfire and receiving treatment. Troops are combing the general area to get rid of the criminals. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya, has sounded a stern warning that Nigeria's military will deal decisively with anyone who takes up arms against the state. General Yahya gave the warning in Meiduguri, Borno State, while inspecting refurbished and new military equipment at Meimalari Cantonment. Mimunagarba reports. Until operational visit to headquarters theater command operation had in Kai by Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya was to further encourage troops to continue to give their best in securing the nation, saying the military remains committed to its mandate. While appreciating the relative peace being enjoyed in the Northeast and other areas, General Yahaya described the recent happenings by criminals in the country as a panic action which the military will deal with decisively. And anybody who take up arms against the state in whatever form it is will get to him. This is a message to all the criminals, whether they are making videos or whatever they are making. The time is up and will get to them by the grace of God.
The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, had after receiving the usual operational briefs by commanders within the theater, inspected five T-72 tanks which were repurposed and an Eagle Man battle tank recovered from the terrorists by the military which was put to test before him. To further enhance welfare of soldiers and address accommodation challenges, the Chief of Army Staff unveiled a block of 36 flats and other infrastructural projects within the Malari Cantonment, as well as inspected ongoing construction work at 7 Division Hospital in Maiduguri, Maimuna Garaba, NTA News. Still on security, Nigeria is boosting the capacity of its security personnel to effectively stem the volatile contemporary security challenges. This is the thrust of a seminar organized by the Nigerian Army on peace support operations. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports. Africa is facing different security challenges in different parts. But an end to all this in sight, the military promised. Terrorism, banditry, and secessionist agitation are the major challenges. The complex nature of this requires joint operations. This seminar is characteristically another Nigerian Army's noble effort at deepening collaboration with sister services and other security agencies towards enhancing our competencies. As we are all aware, the contemporary operation environment is increasingly complex, ambiguous, and volatile. Our operation therefore need to be joined and multi-agency in scope so as to harness the combined competencies in all in order to achieve desired end states. The seminar is focusing on Nigeria in contemporary peace support operations. It is therefore elating to know that the Nigerian army is being quite proactive by organizing seminars such as this where interactions between agencies with peace support operations capabilities could be fostered. Nigeria is the dominant nation in peace support operations in Africa, and ending this is a tax that must be achieved, and this seminar holds the key to a large extent. From the Nigerian Army War College in Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Traditional leaders say they will utilize every avenue, including traditional methods of pr crime prevention, to restore peace and safety in Akbabuyo and Bakasi which where creeks have become a hideout for kidnappers traditional rulers and clan heads of the local government areas said this in reaction to the abduction of an undergraduate of arthur jarvis university located in a Papu local government area of cross river state justina etim reports on the 19th of July 2022, kidnappers invaded the Arthur Jarvis University in Akpabuyu, abducting one of the students. That swift response from the police led to the rescue of the students from a creek, which is said to be a den for criminals. Now, traditional rulers in the area are raising concerns over increasing crime rates in the communities within this region, stating that they will not fold their arms and watch development elude the locality due to activities of criminals. We have uh, taken a decision on some issues which cannot be made public. His Excellency the Governor has tried. Traditional laws of this state, they have also tried in trying to cope this menace. Community leaders are appealing to the state government to beef up security in Akbabuyo and Bakasi while calling on the police to respond swiftly to emergency calls when the need arises. Security agencies have a major role to play and uh, we don't have their support. Uh, we, the, the armless uh, citizens, cannot uh, handle the situation. The manpower is not enough. It's not enough. Coupled with the present situation in Akbabuyo. We appeal to everybody, especially the children themselves, the students, that the school is very peaceful. Residents of the affected communities believe that the coastal nature makes it vulnerable to infiltration of criminals from neighboring states. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. 
Following the recent flood disaster which claimed lives and property worth millions of Naira in Gulaini, Yobe State, the Nigerian Army Engineering Corps is intervening in the reconstruction of the only bridge which links the community and several others with the rest of the state. A team from the Army 23 Support Engineers Regiment, JOSS, was at the site of the collapsed bridge for a feasibility study in preparation for its rehabilitation. Yunus Sassiliman reports. <laughs> This is the risk that Gulani people will have to undertake to conduct their daily businesses after the collapse of this strategic bridge that links many communities, including the council's headquarters, Bara. This development is said to be a threat to Yobe's food security in this year's cropping season, as the area is considered as one of the food baskets of the state. Apart from making access to farmlands difficult for locals, the flood had also washed away many farmlands belonging to large, medium as well as small farmers. However, the visit to the collapsed bridge site by the Nigerian Army Engineers led by the Commanding Officer 23 Support Engineering Regiment JAS, Lieutenant Colonel David, is an indication of sigh of relief to people of Gulani local government area. The Army team of engineers alongside Yobe State government officials carried out an in-depth feasibility study with a view to coming up with a comprehensive bill of quantities for approval by the Army headquarters. The mission to see the possibility of erecting military bridges across the gaps created by the flood. The project, when completed, will not only facilitate agricultural activities, but will also enhance the security of the general area. In the matter, Yunusa Suleiman, NTA News. Thank you, Yunusa. And such a team of army engineers is usually called sappers. And when they undertake such a mission, they're usually greeted with way to go sappers. Now, it's been more than a month since enumerators began to collect to collate data for the 2022 National Personnel Audit for basic education in Nigeria. With the southern phase of the audit concluded and northern phase in progress, the Senate Committee on Basic Education is monitoring the process in FCT schools. The monitoring process on how the National Personnel Audit is going on in the FCT. So all we do is when we... When the Senate Committee on Basic Education has the four point here. Observations made and questions answered. School standard, teachers' capacity and students' population on the lookout for. This exercise will also help um, the officers to identify the number of teachers uh, that each school has if it is commensurate with the number of pupils on roll. The quality of the teachers are also very important. Apart from that, most importantly, to ensure if those teachers are registered with the Teachers Registration Council. Public and private, registered and unregistered schools up for enumeration and results gathered will assist when it comes to legislation for basic education in Nigeria. Abdul Malik Hassan, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari says the federal government will expedite action to matters in matters bordering on Nigerians living in the diaspora due to the immense contrib contributions to nation building. This was in a message delivered by the Chief of Staff to the President, Ibrahim Gambari, at the 2022 National Diaspora Day organized by Nigerians in Diaspora Commission in Abuja. Galba Muhammad Nata'ala reports. National Diaspora Day celebrated on 25th of July every year provides an avenue to recognize Nigerians abroad that have excelled in fields like medicine, education, information technology, and many more. It is also a forum for cross-fertilization of ideas among diasporans, the diplomatic corps, and government representatives. With the theme, Diaspora engagement in globally challenging times, speakers describe the event as apt and timely to accelerate policies necessary for action. 
the achievements of our diasporans, many of whom are our goodwill ambassadors, contributing immensely and exceeding, excelling globally in uplifting the image of Nigeria, as well as continue to develop Nigeria through your resources, through your talents, through your skills, and through your global exposures. These are very well appreciated by my administration and Nigeria as a whole. I commend the efforts of the Nigerian diaspora. Several speakers joined virtually, emphasizing critical roles diasporans play towards Nigeria's development drive, urging both those at home and abroad to continue putting their best to do the country proud. You can see the passion, the interest that Nigerians are going to have. And you know, I mean, we can't do without them. We want to bring our professions that are already over there to come and assist our people in Nigeria. In the UK, for example, Nigerians excel more in the medical field and in the field of education. An interactive session featured deliberation with some diasporans online at the diaspora matters that stalled their activities during the COVID-19 pandemic. In Abuja, Garbo Mohamed Atala, NTA News. Lagos State Government has declared four days public holiday from Tuesday 26th July to Friday 29th July 2022 to enable civil servants to register and collect their permanent voter cards, PVCs. In a statement by the State Head of Service, Hakim Murio Kunola, the work-free days have become necessary in lieu of the 31st of July deadline given by the Independent National Electoral Commission for the procurement of PVCs. The statement directs the accounting officers to ensure compliance, adding that workers are expected to bring along their PVCs while returning for work. It further directs accounting officers to excuse workers in the respective grade levels on the scheduled dates. Meanwhile, the INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner in Lagos State, Mr. Ulushegu Abaje, says Lagos State currently has about 7 million registered voters. And for more news from the Center of Excellence, let's join Adiola in our Lagos studio. Hello, Adiola. Hello, Nadia, too. A three-day intensive interactive forum of board members and management of a national broadcasting commission, NBC, has kicked off in Lagos. S.A. Onwamaka hopes that the gathering is expected to come up with relevant policy framework for the broadcast industry preparatory to full digital switchover. The concept of digital switchover is a technological advancement in the field of broadcasting. And as the nation's broadcast regulatory agency crosses the T's and dots the I's ahead of full migration from terrestrial to digital platform, the Bashir Balarewa-led NBC board says there is need for experts to dig deeper into the issues, create a roadmap and provide sufficient policy direction for the success of the initiative. So one of the areas we are looking at the, is also think of an alternative way to put the burden off let the government to be able to raise uh, enough funds so, so that uh, the program can actually take off the ground and then make us to achieve the desired objective. The Broadcast Commission, the board chairman, assured will come up with friendly and people-oriented policies that will benefit all stakeholders in the long run. We understand exactly where we are uh within the digital framework now it's left for us to now sit down and look at within that framework what can we do to advance policy options to ease operational options for the nbc to ensure that we succeed in digitization across the country to remove all those uh, um, brushes that usually happen between management of an organization and board members because when you sit together and uh, there's an interactive between the two then we can all agree call the stakeholders to review the journey so far in order to know where we are what we have been able to achieve it is expected that the communique from the forum will serve as a trajectory to the fulfillment of the switch over process in lagos S.A. Owamaka, NT News. 
As one of the most anticipated seasons of the year, rainy season comes with different packages, offering the good, the bad, and sometimes the ugly. For residents of Lagos State, flash flood is one major concern. In this report, Rotharia Samuel went to town to find out what Lagosians are doing to avert this and where that fails, manage recurring cases of flooding. Clouds gather, the sky turns dark, and the hearts of Lagosians race in fear of what might turn out to be an impending flood. This is the narrative in many parts of Lagos State as the ratio and capacity of available drainage system falls short of what is needed to contain the amount of rainfall. The canals, gutters, and all possible water channels provided are either too narrow or clogged due to excessive silt and refuse generated and indiscriminately disposed by residents. There's no quarter. It's the road quarter. And this is my area. Thank us. No road in this rain. No road. Water always full everywhere. Even in my area, once so some people they just, you know, dump refuse where it's supposed not to dump. And the Lagos State government is trying to, you know, tackle that effect. But well, still see some people, you know, causing a lot of challenges to, to that. While government works out measures to change this ugly narrative, what are Lagosians doing on their own to ensure that floods and disasters are averted? People are in our area, we do clean our gutter. The Independent National Electoral Commission hereby informs the general public that the ongoing continued voter registration has been extended until Sunday, 31st July 2022. The exercise will also take place from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily, including Saturdays and Sundays. Persons who are 18 years and above who have not registered before should register to enable them vote in future elections. Previously registered voters who wish to transfer their registration or apply for replacement of loss or damaged voters' cards or correct their personal information on the register can do so, but they should not register afresh in order to avoid double registration. They can use the online portal cvr.inecnigeria.org or visit any of the registration centers nearest to them. Remember, only persons who are 18 years and above who have never registered before should register afresh. This message is from the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The Catholic Archdiocese of Jos, Nigeria, the principal, staff and students of St. Mumba College cordially invite the general public to the 2022 graduation and Thanksgiving Mass speech and prize giving day and the launching of her annual magazine under the distinguished chairmanship of Sir John Edo Izugu, KSJI. Date, Saturday, 30th July 2022. Venue, St. Mumba College Hall, Jos, Plateau State. Time, 9 a.m. prompt. Chief host, His Grace, Most Reverend Dr. Matthew Ishaya Audu, Catholic Archbishop of Jos. Host, Very Reverend Joseph Chiriji, Principal, St. Mumba College. Co-host, Mrs. Rose Agu, Special Guest of Honor, Barrister T. Veshima. Guest Speaker, Mr. Joseph Gura. Chief Launcher, Inspector Goyal Andrew. Mother of the Day, Mrs. Edwina Jingo. Chair Lady, Mrs. Helen John Wafo. Noble Fathers of the Day, All Fathers of Graduates. Noble Mothers of the Day, All Mothers of Graduates. Father of the Day, Sir Stephen Dajan Dagoet, KSM JP. For further inquiries, please contact Mojeku Asanta Uche on 0803-452-5062 or Roman IS on 0806-969-4206. <laughs> Imagine any society without laws. Imagine piles of laws without the courts to interpret them. Imagine lots of interpretation without a medium to bring them to your doorstep. The scheme on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority helps to fill the gaps and turns law and justice into a tangible instrument for national development. That is the scale, and it is status. <laughs> The National Broadcasting Commission has observed with concern the misuse of the airwaves to propagate incendiary materials by different groups in some broadcasting stations in recent times. 
while appreciating the need for educating, informing, and enlightening the public on issues bothering on our national development. The Commission wishes to seize this opportunity to advise broadcasters to be circumspect in the handling of news and current affairs programs by exhibiting the necessary professionalism. Consequently, the Commission implores broadcasters to advise guests and or analysts on their platforms not to polarize the citizenry with divisive rhetorics in driving home their points. Ensure that every news and current affairs program conforms with the provision of the Nigeria Broadcasting Code. Take their social responsibility requirements seriously. Therefore, the Commission reminds broadcasters to be guided by the provisions of the Nigeria Broadcasting Code, especially the underlisted sections 5.3.3b. The broadcasters shall, in using political materials for news and current affairs programs, avoid hate speech, inflammatory, derogatory, and divisive remarks or allusions. 5.4.1f. The broadcaster shall not transmit divisive material that may threaten or compromise the indivisibility and indissolubility of Nigeria as a sovereign state. 5.5.6 The broadcaster shall have a delay mechanism to guard against possible undesirable content. Please note that every broadcast station is responsible for the content it transmits and shall be held liable for any content in violation of the Nigeria Broadcasting Code. Be advised. Signed, Malam Balare Beshehu Ilela. Director General Announcer is nationwide on the network service of the NTA and it seems the rains keep interfering with our signals in Lagos, so we'll join Gabrielle in Port Harcourt instead. Thanks for bearing with us. Hello Gabrielle. Thank you, Lachet. Thank you, Lachetson. Welcome to Port Harcourt. Farmers operating in agriculture as business have been encouraged to give back to the government through prompt payment of taxes, as this will help in raising internally generated revenue and stimulate the economy of the states. This was at a visit by the Aquarium State Chapter of Society of Women in taxation to the Ministry of Agriculture. Evelyn Bado, Epo reports. Dr. Fiong Ofo said farmers operating agriculture as a business should be encouraged to give back to government through prompt payment of taxes as this will increase internal and growth of the state. She observes that when the IGR is improved, basic amenities and other facilities will be provided, advising people not to view tax collectors as enemies but partners in the development of the economy. It's just agriculture, so that people being the most basic need of man is to encourage people to, to see what they can do in, in terms of agriculture, to take a point to that point that the students see desire that we will be number one. The commissioner also decries the unpopular practice of youths in agriculture and reiterates government's commitment in engaging them in the production, processing, marketing of any of the different value chains of agriculture to earn a living. In Uyo, Evelyn Badu Epo, NCA News. The River State Chapter of the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, have joined with counter their counterparts for the nationwide protests in solidarity with the Academic Staff Union of University Zasu and other affiliate unions over the lingering industrial action in public universities in Nigeria. Diani Kume Uledo reports that the match began from the State Secretariat and terminated at Government House. His reports. <laughs> Also, had embarked on strike since February 14 over the non implementation of a standing agreement as well as other demands. To help resolve the lingering face off between ASO and the federal government, Labour Congress is embarking on this solidarity protest. This is intended to help resolve the crisis and allow Nigerian students back to classes. The future of this country is in our hands. The future of our children are in our hands. We have to start. Because the time is now. The plan of us as we move, that will be very beautiful. The 
in River State, different affiliate bodies marched from the NNC State Secretariat to Ukwere Road to Government House carrying placards with different inscriptions to register their demand. Their demands are simple. Sign the renegotiated agreement. Fund education. Adopt UTAS. Very simple. These are our core demands. Permanent Secretary, SSG Office, who represented the River State Government, Dr. George Winke, commended Labour for peaceful rally, promising them to deliver their message. Good day to the organizers of this. The NSC Solidarity Rally continues tomorrow in Port Harcourt. Yanukume Ulolo, NTN News. And as our contribution from Port Harcourt, Nationwide continues with Najatsu in Abuja. Thank you, Gabriel. Now we'll head back to Lagos, where earlier on, the Nigerian Labour Congress and affiliate unions took to the streets for a peaceful protest in solidarity with members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities who are on strike. Aboladi Salami reports. It was a promise kept to embark on a peaceful protest in sympathy with the Academic Staff Union of Universities and the Nigerian students who have been at home for the past five months. The protest is to urge the federal government to quickly resolve all lingering issues standing in the way of reopening universities for academic activities. As early as 7 in the morning, leadership of the Nigerian Labour Congress and organized union members converged on a Kedja roundabout, singing and chanting various solidarity songs. <laughs> At the State House of Assembly, Alausa, where the march terminated, the protesters joined human rights activist Femi Falano, bared their minds on their demands. And to ask every Nigeria to impress it on government to get our children back to school. Meanwhile, personnel of the Nigerian police on ground to provide security cover for the protests. In Lagos, Abaladi Salami, NTA News. And Nigerian governors say they are working with the federal government to find a lasting solution to the lingering industrial disharmony with university lecturers. Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji stated this while addressing representatives of labor unions who staged a rally in protest of the prolonged closure of the nation's universities. Abdullahi Mustafa reports. In the early hours of the day, representatives of various labor unions gather along Hadeja Road, Ahmad Belloway Junction for the rally. It is a nationwide activity organized by the Nigeria Labor Congress to show concern over the prolonged closure of the nation's universities. Chanting solidarity songs and carrying placards, the comrades marched from Gunduba Avenue Junction through Ahmad Belloway and stopped at the entrance to the Kano government house, Kano State Council Chairman of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Kabira Adominjibul, who led the rally, presented a letter containing their demands to Governor Abdullahi Omar Ganduji. We rise to solicit your support and intervention in the matter of the dispute between the federal government and the unions in the tertiary education subsector. It's a problem that has been inherited from previous administration and it's a problem that must be resolved. The governor assured that efforts being made by the Nigerian Governors Forum and the federal government will soon come to fruition. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa, NTA News. We also have a situation report from Ilori where our reporter on Lajide Bello filed a situation report. At the labor house here in Ilori, the Kwasi capital, where different interest groups, including the NLC, are carrying out the instruction of the national president of the union to conduct a peaceful solidarity protest in support of ASU. Next thing we are going for three working day action, industrial action. After that, if nothing was done, then we move. We are going to do another next meeting. 
to know the next line of action. You are aware that our salaries have been stopped for five months now, and we have colleagues who are on chronic medications. You look at our classrooms, they are dilapidated. You look at our laboratories, there is no equipment, there is no chemical for you to bring out any good research in that place. Look at our hostels, they are down. Look at every infrastructure in that university, it is down. And we will be looking forward to his response with this action, and if there is nothing, we will seek it to the call of our parents as well. The peaceful protest by labor union in Power State and other academic unions terminated here at the government house in Lorry. We still have more on the NLC action compiled by Murjana to Adam Saeed. <laughs> The Nigerian Labour Congress has promised to lend support to the Nigerian students in ensuring that the lingering ASU strike comes to an end. To this end, the union has embarked on a peaceful protest. In Kaduna, Dr. Muhammad reports that the rally was peaceful and also called for quick resolution of the issues. In Benin, Good Luck Inani reports that the solidarity protest in the state was also peaceful. The protesters were received at the government house by the chief of staff who promised to transmit their message to the governor. Similarly, in Calabar, the protesters converged on the Millennium Park with noticeable presence of security agencies to forestall any breakdown of law and order, urging government to address the five-month-old ASU strike. In Yola, the solidarity rally was peaceful, with the chapter calling for quick resolution of the strike. In Abuja, Marijana to Adam Said, NTA News. In the meantime, the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, and the federal government have been urged to make concessions in their negotiations in order to resolve the lingering strike in the education sector. Discussing the nationwide protest to return students to school, academics and labor experts caution against protest at this time because of the security implications. Akimini Williams reports. Since February this year, public universities in Nigeria have been shut down as unions in the education sector led by the Academic Staff Union of Universities have been on strike over the implementation of an agreement reached with government in 2009. This is said to be the 16th time ASU has gone on strike in 23 years and the lingering consequences of the current industrial action compelled the Nigerian Labour Congress to announce a nationwide protest to get students back to school. Academics and labor experts, however, believe that this will not help the situation as it could have grave security and economic implications for the country. I don't expect that we have a total shutdown. If we have a total shutdown, there's already shutdowns at the universities. People who have shops at these universities no longer have anything to, to maybe their businesses have been closed. Certain students had, maybe most of the students, if not all, paid their uh, some of them who live off campus paid money for accommodation. They cannot get these monies back. So a lot of losses has already been incurred. We cannot continue to increase the losses that our citizens have incurred as a result of this prolonged strike. They however urge federal government and ASU to shift positions and be more dynamic in deploying conflict resolution strategies to end the strike. There is the alternative of the private private-public uh, partnership, TPPs are going on all around the world, and it is something that can be explored. University of Abuja starts from Airport Junction up to Bagualada. What will uh, what will the university use all that land for? Bring in people, give them that land, set up communities, bring in specialists from both sides, technocrats from both sides, to sit down and iron out these issues. This is something about artificial intelligence. It's not even a human intelligence issue where you say it is complex and it cannot be resolved. You need a different approach. You need advocacy. You need to pressurize the, I mean, uh, the stakeholders. And in a democracy, the same method you use in 1988, you can't use it in a, in a democratic setting because here the space is open. You can lobby, you can convince, you know, even funding is about public appropriation so that people get used to know your approach. The recurring crisis in Nigerian universities has been over funding of tertiary institutions. In Abuja, Ekemini Williams, NTA News. Badon is our next stop and Kemi is our guide. Over to you, Kemi. Thank you, Nadia, and welcome to Ibadan. 
The Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, or your state, has joined its counterpart across the country in a nationwide solidarity protest calling for an end to the lingering acid strike. Kayode Oladushu monitored the protest within Ibadu Metropolis in our report. Different organized unions led by the NLC in one voice appealed to government to attend to the various demands by ASU towards ending the five months ongoing strike. Government should please come to the rescue of Nigerian youths. This protest is just a warning that enough is enough. I'm a lecturer, I'm a parent, my children are students, my family are students, so that's what we come out. But it's our time that government does the needful to move back our children to school. The protesters moved around major areas of Ibadan Metropolis with a stopover at the governor's office. These are our children. We feel with them. We are concerned. And whatever steps there are to, to take by the state government to draw the attention of the federal government, that is what we will do. The protest continues tomorrow in Ibadan. Five lavish NTA News. The increase in playability of the youth, a non-governmental organization has selected 100 female graduates in Ibadan for training in technological skills and empowerment. Kaido Ladushu again reports. As unemployment continues to pose threats to the global economy, particularly with an increase in population, there is a need for a new approach to reduce it. This informs the collaboration between STEM Steps Women Fellowship and the government of the United States of America for an eight weeks digital technology and business training for females in various fields. This is a global competition for an alumni impact award from our international visitor exchange program. They're very hard to come by and we, we couldn't agree more on the theme of empowering women through science technology. Beyond the training, the funding is for the training and I'm sure that because whenever you're part of any um, program of the U.S. government, there are other follow-up opportunities that come that they too will be able to apply for and when they get it it will be um, something that will help their business these young graduates are expected to be employable employers of others and be self-reliant after undergoing the period of training anybody the legacy nta news and that's it from ibadon nationwide continues with Najatu in abuja after the break don't go away it's life. Once you lose hope, you lose life. Once people get lifted to a certain level, they start feeling godlike. What would you attribute this backwardness in education to in the not today? What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. wrong. And program is reflection. Everywhere you go, from banks to hospitals to public offices, mass transit stations, airports and even telecommunication centers, senior citizens are treated as nuisances. They are not. They are senior members of our society and they deserve the utmost respect. We shouldn't be having our aged fathers and mothers standing in long queues to withdraw their monies at banks. Our retired senior citizens shouldn't be caught standing in buses for lack of seats or chasing after one just to get to their destination. Senior citizens shouldn't have to sit long hours in hospital corridors with no geriatric specialist to attend to them. Our senior citizens deserve better treatment from all of us. They deserve to be listened to. They are deserving of seat reservations on public buses and priority attendance in public spaces. As young people, we are quick to say, no one owes you. This is not true. We owe the elderly members of our society a helping hand, our services, and respect. Age-friendly societies have more senior citizens enjoying good health, living safely, and engaging in meaningful community work than those who do not. Define age-friendly services for senior citizens. 
Harmony of biodiversity destroyed, built in climate crisis and climate phases. That is the situation indeed, yet we carry on like a bull in a china shop. On environment matters, we take the bull by the horns, comb the nooks and cranny of Nigeria. Asking tough questions. Examining challenges and opportunities. Giving human face to the science, facts, facts and global agreements. It's a call for action. Don't miss it. Join a world winning environmental journalist, Jennifer Igwe, and other NTA eco reporters for Environment Matters. It's nice to know you're still watching Nationwide and we're talking population matters now. The National Population Commission has been embarking on advocacy visits to key stakeholders, including Governor Dapo Abiodo of Ogun State, former President Olushego Obasanjo, and the Alake of Ebaland Oba Adedotu Aremu Badebo, to ensure a population census of international standard. Olusheye Adiabo reports. The stage for having Nigeria's actual population data is getting set, and this time the promise is to digitize the process for a credible and verifiable census. Former President Olusheye Obasanjo was at the end of our fears when the last census was held in 2006. He is witnessing the efforts of the Commission. He inaugurated in 2001, moving steadily towards a new census. He reflects on the past exercise and is optimistic of a better outcome. The census should lead on to re demarcation of constituencies, which we have run away from since 2006. Yes. And we keep deceiving ourselves and lying to ourselves and running away from the truth. We must face the truth and deal with it. Governor of the United States, Dapo Abiyadun, and of the population managers believe that the nationwide aid plant is long overdue for Nigeria promising to support the exercise. At the state government, we are looking forward to a very successful census of the science next year. We want to use this opportunity to ask uh, Nigerians, please, please cooperate with the National Population Commission. Take this exercise, like I've always said, as your personal project. We want this data for Nigeria. The National Population Commission says Actualizing coverage in 99% of the local government areas across states of the Federation in its remuneration area demarcation EAD exercise and the ongoing trial census nationwide will ensure a credible census is delivered in 2023. Adiango, NTN News. Meanwhile, key players in Jagawa say the headcount and listing of households in the ongoing trial census in nine local government areas of the state have been successful due to the sensitization and commitment put in place before the commencement of the exercise. Ibrahim Bello reports. Preparatory to the 2023 National Population and Housing Census, the National Population Commission decided to carry out trial headcount and housing census with enumerators moving to selected houses in the last phase of the trial exercise. 30-year-old Amina Husseini was 14 years old during the last census and clearly recalls how the exercise went then while hoping for the success of the 2023 exercise. And Basiri Ismail was 9 years old during the 2006 census and could not recall how it went but is eager to witness the forthcoming exercise. <laughs> 
We are prayerful that the actual census is successful. The faith of important in terms of planning among the has been taking place. Everybody is aware, the villagers, the people are aware. Some people, they didn't even go to farm. They are very good people. Because they welcome us. We have taken town hall meetings. We have sensitized the, 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 the ongoing trial census uh, since we have met the stakeholders relevant and uh, they have given us a lot of cooperation and uh, assistance. And uh, my assessment is that uh, uh, it is going to be quite successful. The 2023 census campaign for a free and fair election which will engender good governance in the country. Kenneth Nanim reports. Nigeria has been commended at many local and international forums for an uninterrupted democracy since 1999, and INEC is leveraging the political experience of over two decades to deepen the electoral process through the deployment of ICT. But issues of vote buying and selling seem to continue unabated, as alleged by election observers during the AKT and Oshun off cycle governorship elections conducted recently. The situation prompted independent research by a non-governmental organization, the Good Governance Awareness Initiative, which pointed to poverty, ignorance of the law by the electorate, voter apathy, and the urge to win elections at all costs by unpatriotic politicians as major causes of vote trading during elections. They also came up with solutions. Including purchasing body cams for police officers at the polling units and setting up of mobile courts in the 774 local governments in the Federation to expedite the persecution of vote buyers and sellers. There should be stiffer penalties for both vote buyers and sellers. The group also recommended intensified voter education by INEC and other relevant agencies as key to ending vote buying and other electoral malpractices in the country. Kenneth Nanim, NTN News. Nigeria Police Tug of War male and female teams have emerged champions at the 8th African Tug of War Championship in Namibia and also qualified for the World Championship. The Nigeria Tug of War team comprised of the 2021-2022 national champions who are the Nigeria Police Force teams and to the round later game. The Super Falcons of Nigeria have arrived the country after finishing fourth at the just-concluded Africa Women's Cup of Nations in Morocco. The nine-time champions who lost to Zambian ladies by goal to nil in the third-place match arrived the country Monday afternoon with 15 players, while the other players have since returned to their various club sites. Still in football, about 20 grassroots football coaches in Lagos have benefited from a two-day coaching seminar focused on building capacity and professionalism in the running of football academies. In terms of the playing, we need methodologies that say this is the way we play, this is how we want a player to look at the end of the development cycle. And in other sports, Team Nigeria have emerged winner of the 11th edition of the African Arm Wrestling Championship, which ended over the weekend at the National Stadium Lagos. Nigeria won 27 gold, 27 silver and 22 bronze medals to finish in the first position. Egypt was second with 24 gold, while Ghana ended in third place with 18 gold, 22 silver and 5 bronze medals. It's in states in Nigeria now, of course, arm wrestling. So the, the next plan of our agenda is to be at the sport festival in the US and the year as a demonstration sport. And to extreme sports, the annual BMX Day has held at the National Stadium Lagos to promote young talent in extreme sports in the country. For the organizers, the event which featured BMX riders and roller skaters created a platform to popularize the sport. To get to that platform where we have a professional um, competition for each category. BMX riders are working towards the sport becoming a scoring event at the National Sports Festival. With Sports Update, Adeola Komiakiri, NTA News. Sports Update concludes nationwide. Thanks for watching. Remember to always be law-abiding and keep supporting NTA's campaign against rape and rapists. I'm Naja Atutijani. <laughs>
NTHUC Live, analytical, in-depth, educative, and interactive on national issues accommodating all sides of opinions. We as a people have understood that we have to fight corruption before it kills and fights us back. Poverty has a financial index, so it should be fought also with a financial weapon. Give it to the social investments program. It has been a very courageous battle. Tuesday Live, every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. Join us. Stress is a normal physical response to an event that makes your nervous system feel threatened at the perception of danger, whether real or imagined, giving your body automatic mobilization process known as the fight fleet or freeze response. This automobilization response or stress is designed to protect your body. When it is working well, it helps you stay focused, energetic and alert. In an emergency, it spurs you into action to defend yourself. Stress, however, becomes worrisome when it is overwhelming. It can't damage your health, your mood, your productivity, relationship, and even your quality of life. Stress is chiefly induced by environmental conditions or stimulus and emotional instability. Work-related stress is the second most commonly reported condition in the self-reported work-related illness. According to research, results between 2011 and 2012, an estimated 428,000 workers suffered from work stress. Stress affects different people in different ways, but generally, the chemicals that are released by the body as a result of stress can build up over time and cause various mental and physical symptoms. These include irritability, anger, depression, anxiety, food cravings, lack of appetite, headaches, sleep difficulty, and the list is endless. How one handles one's stress depends on the causes and the symptoms, but it is imperative to note that once the pressure or threat has passed, your stress hormone level will usually return to normal. Although social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless, it becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect, and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. This is the network service of the NDA. 